and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose operating through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons. Operate the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name whereby men can be saved in, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have our class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Nigel Williams, followed by our scripture lesson, which is 1 John, the third chapter, which will be read by Dr. Patrick Latorta. Can we all bow our hearts and minds? Heavenly Father, y'all will be asked that you give the eyes to see and the ears to hear and speak and the lessons of this day. We ask that you show us your purpose and your pattern and your plan. More effectively, that you continue to be with us in these last days of the day. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Yahshua the Messiah. Association for any by American, Maryland, reprinted by Yahweh Promotions. This is 1 John, the third chapter. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew, it, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the children of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the adversary, for the adversary sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the adversary. Whosoever is born of Yahweh does not practice sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin be because he is born of Yahweh. In this the children of Yahweh are manifest, and the children of the adversary. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Yahweh, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye, that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore he slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brother, if the world hate you. We know that if, excuse me, 14th verse, we know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the Savior's love, 
because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath the world's goods, and seeth his brother hath need, and shedded up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of Yahweh in him? My little children, let us not love the world it love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, Yahweh is greater than our hearts, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence towards Yahweh. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and, and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua the Messiah, and love one another as he gave us commandments. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and dwelleth in him, in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. And that was First John, the third chapter. Amen. instructed to do that. All right. Then you read over here in Matthew because Yahshua, 
uh, Matthew 5, 17, and 18, actually. He says that, think not that I've come to destroy neither the law or the prophet, but what I've come to do is fulfill them, see? He says, not one job or one two shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled. So he's speaking of that. You also see Peter, James, and John in the 70 that he's chosen to sit down. You see them in the correlation with the children of uh, Israel back there on this mountain. Then you read over there in Hebrews 8 and 5. Paul is speaking of something about tabernacle. See? He says now that this tabernacle was a shadow, just a shadow of heavenly things. So this is what Moses saw. This was an intangible tabernacle, which you could not touch, any man could touch with his natural hand. See, it's intangible. But this one, they had the ability to because they had to make it. See, and then at that time, Yahweh said that he may dwell among them. See, when you further read in there, okay. Okay, this is sin, mm -hmm. an offering, an offense against God. An offering or an offense. It's an offense, read. Really. An offense against any law, standard, or code. Any law, standard, see? So if you break the law, that's a sin. Mm -hmm. I run a red light, that's a sin, see? Then I'll be looking behind me trying to see if somebody's, you know, the law is watching or looking through my rear view mirror to see all I hope they See, because I know I've broken the law. Mm -hmm. And then how do you know that? Because it's the spirit of Yahweh in the vessels that tells them, you error. That's wrong. You know you did it. See? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start here. It says, get me in the scripture lesson where it talks about the, uh, the committing of sin. I'm going to start right here. This is 1 John 3 and 4. Now, when I'm pointing here, I'm pointing actually to the vision that Moses has seen in the mountain up here, see, because we're talking about the beginning. So you have a beginning of a vision that he's seen, and there's another, see, there's a, a vision, a beginning. Like we say, eternity has no beginning or ending, see. Now, Yahshua Messiah created, he ain't was holding that for him in well, First John, where he says that he created all the angels, he was one, six, and that all the angels worship him. All right, now everything that was created was supposed to glorify Yahweh. That's what's saying. It's also mentioned in Psalms that he said, let everything that has breath, that's everything, praise ye Yahweh. See, that's Psalms 156. So everything was, was made for him, by him, and without him was not nothing made. All right, give me uh, that in the scripture. This is 1 John 3 and 4. Yes. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Now that was, go ahead, Doctor. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now, it says, whosoever committed sin did what? Transgress. Transgress the law. Now there was one law given Genesis. He says to Adam. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2 and 16, read. Genesis 2 and 16. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you 2 and 13. Now Yahweh Elohim commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now he said, Of every tree, every tree. He didn't just say, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Now it's freely. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now this tree of knowledge, that's some knowledge in there, of good and evil, read. Thou shalt not eat of it, mm -hmm. for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now he told him that. That's what Yahweh told him. Say, now in the day that you eat of it, thou shalt surely die. And then we read on it, and he lived 930 years. Right. See? But we understand coming down here through the Holy Spirit now, see, teaching us what that is. He died in his consciousness. See, you see, and that's a shame. Well, look, when individuals do something wrong, we don't walk around like this. See, but we feel it like inside you're covered, like. <laughs> see, but see, this is just an outward manifestation. He's covering his face. See, because there was some shame. He's hurt, you know. So it, te it that's what it says there. See about that. He that transgresses the law. Now, Timothy says this. 
Okay. Adam. Yes, that's what? Timothy uh -huh. 2 and 14. Read. And Adam was not deceived. Now, he wasn't deceived, though. Read. And the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Was in the transgression, see? And what the woman did, she brought in her husband, you see? And he partook of that fruit, see, for his pride. Now, go ahead back with the torture. You want uh, Genesis 3rd chapter? Yes. Okay, and this is Genesis 3rd chapter. Now the serpent was more supple than any beast of the field which mm -hmm. Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, yea. hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the, of the tree of the garden. Uh -huh. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the El Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Right. Then the serpent said unto the woman, no death shall you die. No death, he said, shall you die. Now, look. And I write with my left, but I'm do it with right hand. I brought this out. I've done this before. Now, he told her that thou shalt not eat. I mean, that Elohim said that thou shalt not eat. Mm -hmm. And he goes and say, Elohim, you know that when you eat, then your eyes, what do you say? Oh, I gotta keep going. Or uh -huh. Elohim doth know that this is the fifth verse, three and five of Genesis. Or Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, mm -hmm. and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. Now look, now see that now that's the very same thing he told him not to eat of it. There's a tree of knowledge in the garden of good and evil. No eat of that one. He comes back and says, Well, if you did it, you eat of it. Elohim do know that you should become like him, knowing good and evil. See? Now he only knew. Good. They didn't know anything about that at the time. Because if they had it, he wouldn't have said, said look, the serpent wouldn't have said, thou shalt know something about good and evil. So apparently they didn't know anything about that evil or that, you know, it couldn't. Now, when it happened to Adam, as it was said, when it happened, when that sin happened, see, that can be unkind, that's like a weight on a tongue, see. And that's all it is backwards, actually, you see. He, put, he, he just totally changed it because he knew that was a way for him. When Yahweh kick casted that demon down out of heaven, see, and, and Yahshua told me, say, Behold, I see Lucifer as lightning that falls from heaven. See, now that was, look, you see like that? That's gravity He's coming down. Gravity got a move to him. See, and he knew that was a ton of weight pulling him. He knew he was down there now. So then while he, he's down there, he wants to bring Shemo down with him. See, by the deceitfulness of his words. All right, give me back to John. Okay. And when you read over there, you know, the prophets also does the same thing. He always tells them, do this. If you do this, look, look at Cain. Cain, yeah. Cain conscious was wrong because he brought truth from the ground. Adam was accept uh, Abel was acceptable because he was the first fruit. Now, his consciousness failed. Cain. He asked Cain, why has thou consciousness fallen? Yes, that's Genesis 4 mm -hmm. and um, 5. Read. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And uh -huh. Cain was very wrong, and his countenance failed. See, we talked about this. See, now, now, see, he was very wrong. He was angry. Right. See? Why is this happening? Oh, you know. Go ahead. And Yahweh said unto why art thou wrong? Why are you wrong? Why, why are you angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Why is it fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt be exalted. Uh -huh. and if thou doest not well, sin offereth lying at the door. And it's lying at the door. See? See, and you know what's down here at this time. I can tell you all the time that uh, there's seven steps in this tabernacle. There's nine or maybe vessels here. There's two departmental veils also here. In this tabernacle, see, you have this most holy place, holy place, and the court that goes around the bow. This gate being the first step, the altar, the second step, the third being the brazen label with the holy cup of anointing oil. You got the fourth uh, step being the door, see, and the whole entire holy place is the fifth step with the seven prints, lampstand, the twelve loaves of bread, and the altar of incense. Now, this is golden up in here, this all, uh, holy place. Then you have this second veil, see, in this tabernacle pattern. Uh, 
which is like unto the sixth step, or we like it unto the river Jordan. See, it's all going by a pattern. That's why y'all always set it up. I have it, it's nothing but a pattern. See, and it takes the Holy Spirit to show you. And they'll say, well, what's the sin to you? It may not be to me, but that's my habit. Mm -hmm. I may sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. Ain't wrong with that. That's just a habit that's out of control to me. But see, he's able to control that. You see what I'm saying? That's just something that, 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 that you know, because different folks have different things. We don't preach habitism down here. We don't preach what you should do is have what you shouldn't do. Only thing we're preaching is the truth that someone will come to a knowledge and understanding of who their creator is, how he exists, you see, and that they may become a recipient of this teaching of the Holy Spirit in them. So you got this seventh step of this tabernacle being the most holy because it was two archangels, see, that overshadowed with the mercy seat. And Yahweh said that he would appear here. That's in Leviticus 16 and 2. See, now when a high priest went up and he had to offer up the sins for himself and his house and then the cleansing of the sanctuary for the, the people, see, you say he sprinkled the blood the seven times for the mercy seat in Yahweh. That was accepted. See, some things are accepted, some are not. We have to know what it is and what's not. And coming down here, once again, with the Holy Spirit teaching, will show us what's acceptable, what is not. Cain's gift was not acceptable. Abel's was. See? Okay, give me John 3. Back in John 3. In John 3 and 4 again. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. Mm -hmm. For the law, for the for sin is the transgression of the law. That is the transgression of the law. Three. And he know that that he was manifest to take away our sin. Now that was the purpose. Three. Three. And in him is no sin. Now in Yahshua there is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him uh -huh. sinneth not. Now whosoever abideth in him, remember Yahshua said, this is what he said, I said. I think it's John, over there in John, um, and I can't, maybe the eighth or ninth chapter, maybe look at the past that, it says that I am the Father, and the Father is me. Right. Ain't no sin there. Right. See, once he washed and purified you, and you and him, and he's in you, ain't no sin there. Right. Because what you see now, and you understand it, is the purpose, and you understand why things are like they are now, because he's showing you. So it's no... Big eye, a little you, if I can say it that way. You see, you, you see what, it's, what it's pointing to. It's pointing to Yahshua Messiah. Say, all right. He also said this. Hold on. He says, I, and of myself, do nothing. Yahshua had permission from the Father. That's what we have to have. The permission. See, we can't just go and offer up anything. You see, because I'm still talking about sin versus attack. We just don't go and offer up anything. Is this acceptable? They say, is it not? And he will show you what's acceptable, what's not. It's like parents. Parents know what they expect from their child, what's not expected. You're in my house, you're out of my room, can't do that. You're late, get the door. <laughs> just that simple. All right, go ahead, Dr. Uh, okay. Um, and for if we receive, I'm sorry, uh, fifth verse, uh, fifth verse again. For we, for ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. All right, now, I, I will keep doing it. Matthew 1 26 says that you should bring forth a child, okay? And he should save his people from their sins. Okay? And, and, and the biggest question is, what is that sin? And we say it's a transgression of the law. What is it? You know, the transgression of that. What was that scene? I like this. It was, it was done like this. Oh, uh, God, I, I know I got you holding that, but the umbrella of it. Not to death. We know one to death. See, one of them we do know, 
and that's the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now we know that is because he said that if they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, they will not be forgiven in this world, see, mm -hmm. and he was walking on earth when the time he said that, see, nor the ones to come. So there's no forgiveness for that. See? All right. Yes. Okay, six, uh, this is First John 3 and 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Now, he have not seen. now look, he talked to the Pharisees. See, he had either out of John 5 and 43 or 41. Well, Yahshua Messiah told him he fired his money. Where okay. he told him that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of the five thirty-seven. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is John five thirty-seven. The Father Himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Of me, right? He have neither heard His voice. Now let me. Okay. okay. Or at any time, nor seen his shape. Uh -huh. And ye have not his word abiding in you. And you don't have it in you. For See? whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. Now, this is who he said. He said, Yahshua was not. See? And he said this. This is what Yahshua said. His doctrine is not his own. That's over there in John. Say, I, my doctrine is not my, of my own, it is of him who sent me. So we preach a doctrine that Yahshua Messiah has given or shown to us. See, not our own doctrine. See, they said that uh, that they have neither seen him or heard his voice. So in Deuteronomy, back to the law, it also speaks that. See, see, and they say that we be the seed of Abraham. See, he was talking to those Pharisees and those scribes. See, and right today, Yahshua Messiah still the same thing. Through the preaching of this gospel, he's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes mm -hmm. who said that they be up, you know, Yahshua or, or Abraham. This is our land. See? He's speaking the same thing. He said that he can't do anything different from the law. It's in the prophets, in the fulfillment, and the spiritual reality of it. John and Yahweh kind of can see the same thing that's going on. All right, Doc, go ahead. You've got to go back to the world. Go back to John. Okay, this is first. Yes, yeah. that's John. It's first John it's first John three and seven. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, uh -huh. even as he is righteous. Now we're all children of Yah. That's what we say. Little children. See. All y'all know we grown men, but we're little children in Yahweh's eyes. He mm -hmm. understands that. We have to understand. Go ahead, Bobby. He that committed sin is of the adversary. He that committed sin is of the adversary. For the adversary sinneth from the beginning. Now, John 8 and 44. John 8 and 44. He said, He that sinneth, sinneth from the beginning. Revelation 12 and 7. Said that there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and he. And they were cast out of heaven. And there was no more room found for them up in heaven. Mm -hmm. See? So we take that. We say, okay, that's the beginning. He took us back to the beginning. Because remember, this is the first. God we owe him. Then he created all the other angels. You see? So he said it there. Then he comes on down in the earth plane after he's cast out of heaven. He sends there. Okay, read John 8 for 4. John 8 for 4. Ye are of your father the adversary, mm -hmm. and the lust of your father will ye do. Now that's what you will do. Read. He was a murderer from the beginning. From the beginning. And abode not in the truth. And didn't abode in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Now you know this. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. See. For he is a liar and the father of He's him. the father of the two. So he ain't gonna give y'all, he don't see he's not gonna glorify the father, he's gonna speak of his own self. What he did. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like. Right. See, I mean God the mess. <laughs> you can't touch me, I'm smart, you ain't got enough, you know, education. In other words, he tried to tell you ain't got enough sense. Mm -hmm. See? Go ahead. Uh back to the third. Okay, 3 and 7. Let little children, 1 John 3 and 7. Let no man deceive you, for he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even 
even, in, even as he is righteous. Mm -hmm. He that committed sin is of the adversary, for the adversary sinneth from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the adversary. Ah, now, do that one more time. No, okay. A verse, he that committed sin is he of the adversary. He that committed sin is of the adversary. For the adversary sinneth from the beginning. Now he sinned from the beginning, see? For this purpose. For this purpose now. The Son of Yahweh see, what, was what, manifest. What, 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 what purpose now? I was told that when you read it, you ask yourself those questions. What purpose? Who? What is it in that verse? See? For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was what? Manifest. Was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the adversary. And he did that. See, when he fulfilled the law of all these common purposes, when he did that, he comes back and say, well, he instituted it. We're supposed to do this. We're supposed to have some suffers. Now, he sustained sin now because he's already fulfilled. See, and one of my favorites is, is that uh, Psalms where he says, sacrifices and burnt offerings, now thou wouldst not. Yahweh had no pleasure in them. See, but a body. Yes. He prepared me a body, just like he prepared Adam from the dust of the earth. A body. Thou hast prepared me. See? So that's a true sacrifice. See? There's no more uh, eating of a, a wafer or, or drinking of some grape juice. See? And I heard it like this here say, they're not even real grape juice, they're not even welts. You see, it's just, it's just, it's just sometimes the juice you get from a dollar. Pour over in there, you pass it to the folks, and they partake of it. See? Now, the willful sin, see, and, that, and that's, that's the, I didn't get into that, but see, there is a willful sin. See, he was willful. He willfully did. See, the adversary willfully did. See, you tell him, I'm going to do it my way or no way. See, and y'all will tell you, it's the highway. Okay. <laughs> see? It said that he got Mike and to kick him out. See, I don't know if you go down there and have it, Mike. Y'all kick him out of there because he don't match me. See, it really ain't for y'all because I've given y'all the power to do this. So it wasn't them that's doing it on their own. Y'all should decide to give them the power to do it. You see, it said that the word is quick and powerful. So he's the word of the sun he has to get. The sun gives its rays off for plants and things like that that it may grow. See, so that's that's the true power what we're talking about is Yahshua. Look at one line. Continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, ninth verse, First uh, John three and nine. Whosoever is born of Yahweh does not practice sin. Now wait a minute. See, you must be born again. That's what that's about. Coming out of here, see, we divide one of the red sea here. That's what we told you today. You must. Those are the principles. You must be born again. See, and he that is born of Yahweh said it not, because he's born again. All right, go ahead. Continue, whosoever is born of Yahweh does not practice mm -hmm. sin. Does not practice it now. For his seed remaineth in him. That's the seed, not seeds. Right. For his seed. And we're talking about the son, Yahshua. His seed, his son, or his Holy Spirit remains in you. That's what keeps you from sin. That's what keeps us from practicing, as he just said. We don't practice this. Mm -hmm. We don't have to practice this. Mm -hmm. Even fulfill that. Now what we do, we do it in the spirit. See, over on this side, see, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. See, Jeremiah 31, 31. He has given a new law. He wrote it. And he said he was going to write it in our hearts and in our minds. Not like he did when he brought our fathers from here, see. Because this is all new now. That's what Yahshua said. The whole all things are made new. Any man that is in Yahshua Messiah, that's correct, in the first five and seven or three and seven, where he says, all things are passed away. 
Behold, all things now has become new. See, there ain't no sin in the people. I'm talking about those that are born again. They receive. There ain't no sin in that. See, we will make mistakes. That's another thing. You know. But a little more, and that's it. All right. And let me continue. For who is ever born of Yahweh does not practice sin, nor is he commanded in him. Right. And he cannot sin because he is born of Yahweh. Right. In this, the children of Yahweh are manifest, and the children of the adversary. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Yahweh. Right. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this, Go ahead. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning. Now that's what you heard from the beginning, that you love. Right. One of the laws he said, Yahweh thy elder, with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength. Mm -hmm. Then the second, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Then he said over there, from this all the other laws hang on. That's what Yahshua said. See? And we just gonna repeat the thing, what he said. See, with a, a true knowledge and understanding. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, as, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Now, we ain't gonna love like that. See, that's not love. I, 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 I kill kills because I, I love. It. I can't have nobody else to have it. I'm a kid. That's not love. That's right. That ain't that's love. Right. That's right. You don't kill somebody because you don't want them to. That, that's not love. That's right. That's right. That's right. Love hurt, then let them go. That's right. That's right. That's, right. that's, right. that's that's love. That's love. That's love. That's See? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Not as not as Cain who was uh, of the wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Okay. Because his because his own works were evil. His own works. That's why he slew. Him. And his brother was righteous. And his brother was righteous. You see that? See? You doing something pertaining to Yahweh and it's righteous in Yahweh's eyesight? And then the other one is evil, and they want to, they want to give you for them. See? For all glory and honor, go to Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And for our second speaker this afternoon, we would like to call Dr. Lisa Lerner-Wayne. reality of this topic. Um, first of all, praise go to Yahshua Messiah, because if it were not for the vision of revelation he gave to Dr. Kinley, we wouldn't be able to say anything about this. And we're going to do our best to stay in the scriptures. We all understand or should understand that they're divinely inspired, and they are the words that were revealed to those that wrote them down, or they were his commandments, right? So, um, first people talked about some scriptures I'd like to get, um, Romans uh, 6 and 23, and I'd like to just get the scripture lesson again, 1 John 3 and 4, just to show again the, um, the definition of what we're talking about with regard to sin. Then we're going to talk a little bit about commandments, we're going to talk a little bit about traditions, and we're going to understand at the end of the day, without faith, it's impossible to please you. So you're going to need to have the faith in order to keep from committing the sin. And the sin is going to be transgression of the law. Right? This is Romans 6.23. For, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh's Messiah. Okay, so when you sin, the penalty is death. And under the law that was given to the children of Israel, when you... When you transgress this law of Moses or this law of commandment, see, um, 
then you were to die. But he, pro he provided provision so that instead of you dying for the thing that you did, which you disobeyed what he said or those uh, commandments that were spoken down from Mount Sinai, an innocent animal would die in your stead. And we understand that the Messiah, when he came on the earth plan, he said that he came to fulfill the things that were written in the law. So in his fulfillment, he is the only acceptable sacrifice for sin. So if the children of Israel under the law physically killed an innocent animal so that they might live, then this is being the only acceptable sacrifice for sin once he comes on the scene and he brings these things to an end and translates them to reality, then there's no more need for these animal sacrifices. See? Right. And not only that, but he brought to an end the circumcision, the ceremony, the baptism, the Passover, the sacrifice, and the Ten Commandment law. So at the time, he did provide a commandment to a group of people, the Israelites. He didn't give it to the Gentiles. Right. But it was for the time then present, see? Mm -hmm. um, so in the fulfillment of those things, we know fulfillment means to bring to an end, to translate in reality. Yahshua Messiah is the only acceptable sacrifice for sin. And if we uh, disobey his, his word or that of his father, then we continue to sin, see? Okay, so we're going to use some examples. Um, in the scriptures. So let's just get the scripture lesson, 1 John 3 and 4, just another definition of sin, and then we're going to go into the law to talk a little bit about some of these commandments. This is the importance of this commandment, obeying the commandments. Read it. This is 1 John 3 and 4. Okay. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, now we know that this law abode within this most holy place, the physical law of commandments, in this mercy seat, this Ten Commandments, so-called Ten Commandment law. But we do understand there were some 16, 613 laws and ordinances. Right. So at this time, with the children of Israel and them only, this was the commandment of Yahweh. But we do understand that this was a type and a shadow, because in Romans 1, 19 and 20, it states that to uh, understand the invisible things of Yahweh, you have to look at the things that are made. Mm -hmm. So this physical law was pointing to the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah. And that law makes us free from this law of sin and death. Right. Okay, this law in the physical body, in the most holy place of the physical body compared to the tabernacle, and you've seen us in the various shows go through this tabernacle, you understand how important it is, and we compare all things to this pattern. There's a pituitary gland that sits in, it's the master gland of this physical body. It secretes ten, uh, seven hormones on one side, three on the other. It governs this body, see? See, it governs its growth, reproduction, and metabolism, see? This law governs this body, or this tabernacle, this temple, just like this law governs the tabernacle, the temple, or the assembly of uh, Israel, see? see? And it's a type and a shadow of the law of the spirit of life that will govern the soul, see? Right. This governs the physical body, but right. something has to govern the soul and keep it from transgressing the law. Right. And the law is yeah. the spoken word of Yahweh. So the Deuteronomy 6 and 3, um, man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. That's we right. know that the ear tries words as the mouth tastes meat, as it states in Job 34th chapter, see? That's right. And John says, in John uh, 6, 63, it is the spirit that gives us life. The flesh profits nothing. It's the words that are spoken that are spirit and life. So we have to understand the commandment. Now, the first speaker talked about the commandment that was uh, recorded in Jude, that all the angels should worship Yahweh Elohim, see? And those that did not, see, they committed sin. They were then there was a penalty for that. Yes. They died spiritually and psychologically. Those satanic spirits... They went from being angels to satanic spirits, and they're down here. The scripture mm -hmm. says, well, on to the inhabitants of the earth, because basically Satan and his demons have come down, having great wrath, onto you. Um, we talked about Adam. Adam had only one woman up here, see? Mm -hmm. there was, it wasn't a bunch of women to run around with, to be, you know, some example of a habit, see? Right. So if there was only one woman up here, see, and there was no physical law that was given to the Israelites at that time, how did he transgress? Right. Because he disobeyed the commandment of Yahshua Messiah. Well, the woman disobeyed the commandment, and Adam will only die for his bride, see, because he's a type of Yahshua Messiah. Okay, get in Deuteronomy, um, Patrick. Five and ten. Yeah, please. This is Deuteronomy five and ten. I just want to talk about these commandments. See, he disobeyed the commandment. Um, Noah was given a commandment that it was going to rain. See, I'm just taking you down to these days of the dispensation. 
Noah uh, was told that it's going to rain and to build an ark. And those that got in the ark, they obeyed the commandment. And those that did not, they perished in the flood. Read. Right. This is Deuteronomy 5 and 10. Uh -huh. Uh, show, uh, excuse me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Right. 29th verse. Uh -huh. Oh, that they were such a heart in them that they would fear me uh -huh. and keep all my commandments always. So Deuteronomy, this is Moses talking about the heart of the children of Israel and that they were not obedient to the commandments. See, this at the time, this was the law that needed to be obeyed. This was the law that was given to Israelites, and it was physical, it was natural, see. But um, they did not obey this, his commandments. And that was, that was grievous on Yahweh, see. And he continued to strive with that woman or Israel and that son or that body of people, see. And he continues to have mercy on us as souls of men. But he's not going to continue with that mercy, see. Right. So there's going to come a time where you have to repent. You have to have a change of mind. That's you have to right. stop that, you know, see, disobedience. Read. This is, it, uh, Kings. Get Kings. this is First Kings 11.38. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and will do right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant, and I will be with thee and will build and will build thee a sure house that I will build for David and to give Israel unto thee. Okay, so and get the next one. So um, this house, see, this is a tabernacle or a temple, a tabernacle that was built, see. And Yahweh said he would dwell in this tabernacle in his tabernacle. See, David was given the specifications to build Solomon's temple, and those specifications were given to his son Solomon, and he built this tabernacle. Paul says, what? Know you not that your body is a tabernacle. He's going to talk about this physical body. See, he was talking about the soul. See, right. and, and it's that soul that has to obey the commandments. See, see, and these things were a type and a shadow. So you read, read the next one. This is 2 Kings uh, 17, 13. Can I start at 12 verse? Yeah, if you want to get a little train of thought, please. I okay. appreciate it. Very funny. All right. This is this is uh, first, uh, 2 Kings 17 and 12. Mm -hmm. For they served idols, whereof Yahweh had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Okay, so he says, Don't look. One of these commandments under the law was, Thou shalt not make any graven images. And didn't the children of Israel come down and they disobeyed that commandment? See, didn't some of them die off because of that disobedience to the commandment? See, well, it's the same thing now. See, this was physical, this was natural. But after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and his fulfillment and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, see, this leads, guides, and controls you. And, and you need not that a man teach you these things. See? And this is the covenant that was talked about in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. See, that he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant he made with the with their fathers in the day they took them from the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them. This shall be the covenant that I should make. See, after those days, said Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and they shall be to me. I shall go to them in Elohim, they shall be to me. Okay, this is right. And if you keep going, this is they don't have to teach each other these laws because it's in you. Right. Okay, see, read. Continuing, 13th verse. Yet Yahweh had warned Israel and Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers. So he sent people to warn the folks, see. And if you don't ask for some discernment, you just think that that's just somebody just, you know, just making a lot of noise, right? See, ask for some discernment, see, so being warned, read. <laughs> Turn ye from your evil ways, uh -huh. and keep my commandments right. and my statutes, right. according to the law that I commanded your fathers, which I have said unto you by my servant, my servants and prophets. Okay, that's good. And then um, let's just get John 14 and 15, and we'll move on to talking about transgressing the law. See. And um, this is John 14. I may skip around because I don't have a lot of time. Okay. This is John 14, 15. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. Right. I'm going to read this right here. Uh, 21st verse. If you love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, mm -hmm. he that it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall lo shall be loved of my father. Right. And I love him, and he will ma and I will and will manifest myself to him. Right. 
Okay, so I wanted to just talk about that. We talked about transgressing the law. So um, basically, some of the things that I kind of was looking up and I'm just kind of taking a look at my notes is these traditions, right? So right. we understand what right. sin is. Let's talk a little bit about habits, right? We talk a little bit about women, right? People will say, well, you go around running after women. See, 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 are you, and you might say, well, are you saying that it's okay for me to, no, I'm not telling you that. Right. I'm telling you that. The Holy Spirit was in you. Yeah. 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 Your behavior, see? Yeah. Right. And you're not going to go to hell because you were chasing after women. You're going to hell because you didn't have That's right. the Holy Spirit or you right. weren't listening to the voice within. That's, That's why right. you're going, see? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. You know? right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, you know, there are, there are other examples, right? Let's get the scripture. Whoever's holding it, I'm sorry. I'm going to jump around because we're not going to jump. Um, the Messiah and, and uh, washing his uh, oh. disciples' hands, given that Mark, the seventh chapter, and I think it's also in John, the 15th chapter, um, where um, they say, you know, why do your disciples tra transgress the tradition of the elders? Right. See, because they don't wash their hands. And the Messiah said, why are you transgressing the law of Yahweh by your tradition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, he gave no such commandment of right. these things. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is stuff that people make up. See, I was watching a show yesterday about the Mormons. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it was on current TV. And it talks about how they're not allowed to uh, uh, drink coffee, drink tea, or drink alcohol, okay? Now, there were dietary laws under this um, mm -hmm. old covenant, see, that were given to the Jews and the Jews only, see, not the Mormons. Um, but again, these things were fulfilled by Yahshua Messiah. So now, why are you imposing those things on the people, see? As if somehow there's a sin associated with that, see? Now, you're not going to go to hell because you're drinking tea and you're drinking coffee. Right, right. You're going to go to hell because <laughs> you didn't understand that the Holy Spirit dwells within you and it is His voice, right. His commandment that you should be, see, obeying and not that of man. Okay, right. does anybody have that? Whoever had it on their sheet? Okay, whoever had it on their sheet. Okay. Of course, the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, oft eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and a table. So it wasn't just the hands, right? They had all this other stuff that they imposed on the people as a tradition, see. Uh, was that Mark, the seventh yeah. chapter? Okay, get Matthew, the first chapter, and go to six. You should have that one for you. Mm -hmm. People get that because it talks okay. about it's, it's the same scripture basically okay. written in. Uh, what you know, okay, this is. This, I'm sorry. Okay. This is Matthew 15, 1 through six. Mm -hmm. And then came to Yahshua the scribes and the Pharisees, which were of, which were of Jerusalem. And they're always coming to the Messiah with something, you know, some yeah. something to accuse, right? Exactly. Um, scriptures talk about the satanic spirit is accuser of the brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, first, people talked about John. Uh, is it 8:44? See, they are their father, the devil. See, mm -hmm. liars. Read. Why do thy disciples transgress? the tradition of the elders. I thought they had some really important question to ask. <laughs> For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye transgress the commandment of Yahweh by your traditions? Mm -hmm. For it is not written in your for is it not written in your law, honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curseth mother, father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, whatsoever shall Whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me is a gift of Elohim. Need not honor his father or his mother. Thus have ye made the commandment of Yahweh of none effect by your tradition. All right, so you've made the commandment of none effect. See, he said if you, I think he said something to the effect of if you, uh, you believe me, I, I forget how it goes, but he's talking about the same thing that, you know, if you, if you knew him, you would follow his commandments, basically. Um, okay, so now, why is it that folks aren't able to follow commandment? Why do we impose these additional 
so-called law, laws and, and ordinances and things on the people, right? Because, see, the satanic spirit, all he can see is that which is natural, see? And that's all he's going to be looking at, see? Uh, he's going to be looking at, um, he's going to be looking at physical adultery because he can't see that there's a spiritual adultery. And while you're sitting there looking at that person, Right. In adultery, caught in adultery in the very act, you don't understand that you're an adulterer because you're going outside <laughs> exactly. of the true marriage when the Messiah, and the right. Messiah right. said, Thy maker is thy husband. Right. Right. And that's who you should obey, see. Um, and, and these are the things that, you know, you've got somebody covering up, like for example, in some of the Muslim traditions, the women are covered up, see. Now, but you don't, you, you look at that. And they, and they do that thinking there's some form of righteousness, but then they don't understand that they are naked spiritually and psychologically, see? Yeah, it's just right. like uh, Adam was, see, uh, in coming out of this garden, that condemnation or that for, for transgressing the law or the spoken word of Yahweh, see? So we don't want to be in that state condition. All these natural things, they point to something spiritual. Mm -hmm. So what is it? What is it? We talked about these satanic spirits cast out of heaven, and they're just wreaking havoc down here on the sons of men, on the souls of men, see? Bless Yahweh have mercy. So it's the heart of man that's evil continually, see? Right. Shaquille, could you get your, uh, I think you've got all, uh, uh, Genesis uh, 6 and 5. Now, we just talked about Cain, right? And and Cain had an opportunity to, he, he didn't obey the commandment. He didn't bring the right sacrifice. He had an opportunity to repent or change, and he chose not to, see? So let's get that again, three. Okay, Genesis 6 and 5. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, mm -hmm. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, so only evil continually. Now this is, this is before the physical law was given. These people are in this age, see? We call it, see, the antediluvian age, the age before the flood. And that's the reason for the flood. The thoughts or the imagination of man was only evil continual, right? Or was it four and six? I'm sorry, do I have it in the right place? Uh, it was, uh, yes, it was six and five. I, want, I think I want four and six. Okay, four and six. Is, yeah, this is uh, Genesis 4 and 6. Because I want where it says sin line at the door. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a train of thought. Okay. Uh, 4 and 4. Genesis. And Abel, he brought his firstling of the flock and of the fat, and Yahweh had respect of Abel to his offering. But Cain, and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his confidence failed. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Uh, and why does thy confidence fall in? If thou doest well, thou shalt be exalted. But if thou doest not, but if thou doest not well, sin like offering lieth at the door. Yeah, just do the right thing, really. And uh, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay, that's good enough. But sin lieth at the door. If you don't want to do the commandment, then that's a sin. And what happens with sin? Death, right? So you have to you have to um, be sure that you are following, see, the commandment. And it's through that small, still voice that speaks, see, from heaven or your most holy place in your soul. Okay? So let me see, what else am I missing here? So let's get the Jeremiah 17 chapter, see. And while you're getting that, I'm just going to talk about another parable, Matthew the 15 chapter, because I'm running out of time. Um, the Messiah talks about. Um, he talks about not that that which goes out of man. That's not what defiles a man. Not I'm sorry. That which goes in a man does not defile a man. But that which cometh out, see, was out of the heart. Proceed evil thoughts, adultery, right. fornication. Right. See, you're doing those things physically, but it's not because those things that you're going to be. Punish, it is because you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't do those things physically. And by the way, if you're not doing them things physically, that means you're going to heaven. That's right. All right? That's right. So you're watching somebody else and talking about what their situation is. And the son said, you know, what, what was it cast out first? The motive in your own eyes. See? You're sitting there laughing at that person. You don't know that you're wretched and naked. That's right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Jeremiah 17. You want 17 and 1? Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things uh -huh. and desperately wicked. Uh -huh. Who can know it? Right. Okay. 
So the, I just wanted to get that. It's the heart. It's the soul. That's just an analogy for the soul. That's the wicked thing. That's the thing that can't do right, see? And that's the thing that must be changed or transformed. And that's only through Yahshua Messiah. We must believe on him and be a sin. And why, how can you do that? You have to do that by faith. So I may have given you, Cassandra, some scriptures. And um, you would like getting some of those. And then I'm going to have to see how much time I have. You have uh, 10 minutes total, 9 minutes total. <laughs> okay. I have a uh, First Corinthians uh, 15 and 34. Okay. Awake to, to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of Elohim. I speak this to your to your shame. So this is uh, this is Paul, and he's talking about awake, you know, awake from this dead life state, this sin sick state. Um and and sin not, he's saying uh, awake to righteousness, and that righteousness is in Yahshua Messiah. If we understood that, as the scripture says, none righteous, no, not, right. not one, right. then we would be going around pointing at him and pointing at her, see, right. and being worried about that person's situation, too. Right. Worry about your own house. Yeah. 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 The Messiah said, um, and forgive me, I don't know where it is, but he said, you know, with his judgment, I'm going to paraphrase, it will begin at his house. Right. Right. So you really see, ask, ask Yashua Messiah, see, examine yourself and see if you be in the faith. Okay, Cassandra, read. I'm going to do uh, Romans 14, I'm going to start at 22 to 23. Okay. Has thou faith, have hid you thyself before Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Happy is he that con condemneth not himself, and that thing which he alloweth. And be he that doubteth if damn if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For who whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith. And and the eating is in the spirit. We just talked about that eating thing in the spirit. The ear tries words as the mouth tastes me. The commandment must be followed. The commandment is anything that thus saith Yahweh. And if he speaks in your heart and mind, that is the commandment. And in this age, it is that you are saved by grace through faith. See, not in yourself. It is the gift of Yahweh, lest any man should boast. See, so if he says you're saved by grace and you say, no, I'm not, I must work out my salvation. See, you have sin. See, you have blasphemed. See, because you just went against what thus saith Yahweh. You don't even understand. See, okay. Um, I think that's about it. So if you could get um, saved by grace through faith, and then uh, we're going to end on Revelation 18 chapters. This is uh, Ephesians 2 and 1. And ye have, he quick, quickeneth, who were dead in the uh, trespass of sin. Did you have two? I have two. Um, you're starting two chapters? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air. We, we, we don't want to be under this see, under this um, auspices, or we don't want to be under the power of these satanic spirits. See, Yahshua said, first we can talk about that he has all power, see. All power has been given to him in heaven and in earth. There is no excuse see, for this ignorance. Read. The spirit that you know worketh in the children of disobedience. See. Among whom also we are all heard our disportment in times past and lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy, for his great love where we're in within, he loves us, even when we were dead in sin with us together with the Messiah by grace ye are saved and, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah for in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Yahshua the Messiah for by grace ye are saved through faith and not of your yourselves it is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work on your salvation. There's nothing you can do physically in order to earn or merit salvation. You must have faith in Yahshua Messiah, see, without doubt. And you must obey his commandments, see. 
Um, so the last commandment I'll leave with you, see, and I'll take it straight from the scriptures, see, is to come out of Babylon. Mm-hmm. Come right. out of confusion. Revelation the 18th chapter, see. This is this is Revelation uh, 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven. And see, saying, heard another voice from heaven. See, these are the angels, these are the prophets, these are those that Yahshua has sent with his words, saying what? Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. See, that's that woman that sits on, see, uh, what is it? Uh, seven hills? Or is it? Where is she? Over there? Oh, sorry. There she is. See, she sit, she's sitting on this beat, see, with, is it seven horns? Uh, ten horns. Ten horns. Seven, uh, ten seven, head. yeah. seven heads, see. Right. In in the book of Revelation, Revelation seventeen chapter, but um she she lives deliciously, see. People worship her and they don't understand that this is the beast, see. This woman's riding upon a beast, see, and she represents, see, the satanic spirit, see, and his hope, see. And 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 Babylon physically represented uh if you look it up and I'll get into the etymology. It talked about its confusion, see. And we want to come out of this confusion. We want to come out of the traditions of man, see. We want to be learning what does say Yahweh. So the angels cry, see, and given commandment, come out of her, my people, read. That ye be not partakers of her sin. Of her what? Of her sin. Read. And ye that you receive not of her place. Because you will be punished. The wages of sin is death. See? Um, is there another scripture there? Okay. Just goes to eight. Okay, just. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she reward you, and double unto her double according to her works. In a in the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow gave give her. For she for she said unto her heart, I sit a queen and I am no widow. Okay, and just stop there. I sit a queen and I am no widow. See, looking at somebody else or thinking that there is some righteousness in them, see, mm-hmm. just like the scribes and the Pharisees said. The Messiah said they that are well don't need a physician. Right. Mm-hmm. So she says she don't need a physician. Mm-hmm. She she don't understand that the scripture said there's none righteous, no not one, see. Right. And she represents, see, a whole religious, economic, and political system. Come out of her, my people, see. Mm-hmm. And if you hear the commandment and obey it, see, Yahweh willing, you'll save your soul. Mm-hmm. With that I say I will so I just have one important announcement. We must be out of this room before two o'clock because there is something else to take place here. Okay, and for our third speaker, it is a pleasure and honor to call the Dean of the North Side Chicago Clinic, Dr. John Clay. That's not true. That's <laughs> not true. I told you. For our third speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on our president of the North Side Chicago Clinic, Dr. Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> good, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pick up where the last speaker left off. We welcome everybody in Tiffany Land that are viewing this um, broadcast. And what we're going over is the difference between sins and habits. Now, you can have a lot of habits, and habits can be good and they can be bad. And your habits, like Dr. Lisa Villanueva said, is not what's going to get you in the, the good ones are not going to get you into heaven. You can't go to y'all and say, well, I walked all these old ladies across the street, and I deserve to be here. And neither are your bad habits going to get you the lake of fire. Smoking every five minutes. 
that's not going to get you to lake of fire. That's a habit. That's a bad habit. Now, Paul said, he said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple? But you have to understand, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. The flesh profited nothing. Dr. Lisa Villanueva just had that read, John 6, 63. It's the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. He said, the words I speak are spirit and they are life. Right? So then, smoking from a natural standpoint, nobody got a tech. Like, they put it on the side of the cigarette cartons. Warning. This could cause cancer. So nobody's got a tech unit. And, if, if, you know, that's a habit. All right? Now, what we want to understand is this. We'll start back in heaven. You also have what we call ages and dispensations. What's valid in one age and dispensation may not be valid in the next. So you have to know what you are. Now this is the uh, this is the uh, way that Yahweh divided time, or the ages and dispensations chart. How Yahweh divides time, right? And what He said in one age may not be valid in another. Just as I said, I think the last time I was up here. It's okay for her to wet herself, but it's not okay for me because I'm at a different age than she is. Right? right. right? So then, you want to know where you are. Now, you are here, like at the hotel where they had a map. <laughs> and you look at the map and they say, you're here. You're here. Not here, not here, not here, not here, and not here. You're here. So you want to know what's valid in your age because that's what's going to make sure that you get your reward. You doing what they did here is not going to help you. Now, you want to know what's going on here. Now, here's another thing that I want to say about habits and sins. Romans 5, 14. Give me that real quick. Now, it was read, Romans the 6th chapter, and I'm going to quote it. The wages of sin are death. All you have to do is look at the war in heaven with Satan. Now, the commandment was given in Hebrews the 1st chapter. Let all the angels of Yahweh worship Joshua. Some of them refused, so they were cast out. Or they died spiritually. Then, when you go down and you look at Adam and Eve, and remember the wages of sin and death, when he partook, it wasn't him that was in a transgression, she was. And he partook or took on that sin for his bride. They died. Yahweh is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to say, hey, you're a Muslim, so it's different for you. Or you a Jew, it's different for you. Or you a Jehovah Witness, or for that matter, if you an institute. He's not a respect of person. What he says goes. Romans 5, 14. Romans 5, 14. Pre. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Now when this man, Adam, died, and they're coming out of the garden, and notice here, he's covering himself. He knew, they knew something happened with it, because he said they were naked and were in a shame. Then after they eat, now all of a sudden they're ashamed. So something happened here, is what I'm saying. And what happened here was death. So then he's coming out with his hand, with his face buried in his head. He ain't coming out smiling. He ain't laughing. He's coming out because he's ashamed. He's coming out. Now that death that he suffered rain from Adam all the way down to Moses. That, that includes all the people during the time of Yahshua because they were still under the law of Moses. And then Yahshua comes in and fulfills this law. Now why was this law given? It wasn't given because of their habits. It was given to show them exactly how simple they were. Now this is my point. Finish reading. Even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So now everybody was suffering that death even though they went back there in the garden with Adam physically as a man, it ain't anything. But because he's the father of the physical, everybody was suffering from that. Or in other words, he died not, no, death simply means separation. That's all it means. Like, when we, when a person dies, they soul separates from the body. And then we take the body and separate it from the, you should, put it in the cemetery. <laughs> we know some people have to, some emotional problem where they like to keep it in the house, but no, you separate it and put it in the cemetery. And you don't see people living in the cemetery. So the living is here and the dead is over there. 
All right, so now he's separated or not having a way to know anything about his creator. And so that reigned from Adam to Moses. Now I want to say this. This was given to point up sin. That has to be understood for the people that want to practice this. The circumcisions, baptisms, Lord's Supper, Passovers, nothing was wrong with the law. The people had the problem. Or in other words, see him? This is Apis. This is the uh, uh, Egyptian God, this is his direct representative, Apis. He wasn't the problem. They were the problem. He didn't ask for them to build him. He didn't say, make me. They built him on their own. So they had the issue. All right? So now, the reason they had the issue is because they were still suffering their death. And when you are dead, here's my point. When you are dead, you are prone to sin. You can't help but to sin. Because you're dead. So if you don't have any way, and this is why him coming in, dying, being buried, and resurrected, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is so important. Because that's what gives you life. Now, you can be moral from a civil, from a moral standpoint, and still go to hell. You can have all the best habits in the world. I go to bed at 8 o'clock. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't curse my neighbor. I wouldn't hurt a fly and still bust the lake of fire. Why don't you? Because your good habits are not going to get you in. Right? All right. So what's going to get you in? John 17, 3. This is what's going to get you. This is what's going to get you in. Now, like the last people said, I this is going to away, but faith, anything that's not a faith is sin. So you got to have faith and a knowledge of who your creator is. And even when you're in that death state, he communicates with all his creatures. At some point or another, you've heard that small, still voice or had that feeling. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. John 17 and 3. John 17 and 3. Three. And this is life eternal. Now, eternal life is what gets you heaven. Now, he is eternal life. Now, this is life eternal. Read. Mm -hmm. That they might know that. That they might know. Now, might is not in the original text because Yahweh don't might do nothing. That you know. Either you don't know or you're not. That they may know. Read. Thou only art the true El. That he only is the true El of me. Read. No matter what somebody may say, they call him. That he is the true El of him. Read. And Yahshua the Messiah. And Yahshua the Messiah, which he is Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Whom thou hast sent. Read. I have glorified thee on the earth. Mm -hmm. And I have finished the work which thou givest me. Oh, in other words, he carried out what his father told him to do. And then he took on the flesh mm -hmm. and fulfilled it. Everything that you see was perfect here. And then he takes on shape and form and carries it out. And Mike had it read, sacrifice and offerings, thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared. Just like this one here. You know why this one is prepared? Because this one was. That's right. Take the natural to understand the spirit. Now, when he walked the earth, they thought he was the worst man walking. Because he told them, he said, hey, look, I am coming in my father's name. Now, they, they figured they knew Yahweh. They really didn't because they were still dead. So they were prone to sin. But when he walked the earth, he walked around and he told them, he said, you know, y'all said John had a devil and he wasn't eating and he wasn't drinking. He said, now I come eating and drinking and you call me a gluttonous man and a wine beer. Let you know he, he was drinking liquor. The first miracle he did was to turn water into wine. Mm -hmm. And believe me, he did drink it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did drink it. But now we're not condoning alcoholism. Right. Because if Yahweh tells you, you shouldn't do that, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't do it. But what may be good for somebody else may not be good for you. That's what we're trying to get you to see. Noah was drunk in the wine, and Yahweh still chose him. So y'all was not looking at the habits to reveal that vision to. Now remember, at that time, that was not good. No, not one. And if you understand what a sin is, and it's been going through thoroughly, sin is only, all it means is transgression of the law. Now you want to know what your law is. What's the law in this age? 
Now, you, he'll give you individual things. Well, you know what? You shouldn't have cussed your mother out. That's wrong. And anytime you get that small, still voice and you go against it, everybody in here can, t- I ain't got this, everybody in here can testify to this. Anytime something told me not to do that, what was the end result of what you did? Chastisement. Do you get what the condemnation is what I'm saying? Right? Go over and get, I want Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Now, you and then also get to um, the scripture lesson, 1 John 3 and 4. Because we want to outline what sin is. Now, like I said, you can be a habitual sinner. Practice this. You know the bad part about this? The part that's really how, the, how slick the devil really is? This wasn't even given to nobody but Hebrews. But he got everybody doing it. That's how slick he is. And then the law is faith. Now Yahshua moved this out the way because it didn't do the Hebrews no good. So if it didn't do them any good, if they had nothing in them to, to even keep this, what make you think it's going to do you some good? And you ain't got nothing more than what they had. This is what this is this is this is our plight to the people. Alright, get uh Isaiah 46 and 9 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 9. Read. Remember the former things of old. Now remember the former things of old. Read. Right. Now we also remember this where there's no law, there's no transgression. Until that law came in heaven, no transgression. Then when that law came, let all the angels worship Yahshua. Then those who didn't want to abide by that were cast out. At this point in time, there was really no general law for anybody. That's why we call it the age of conscience. They did what was right in their own eyes. And what was right in their own eyes, because they were dead, caused the flood. Because he said, the imagination of men, and let me say this also. Let me say this also. You don't necessarily have to carry out what you're thinking to be in trouble. You don't necessarily, because he looks at the, the, the heart, the intent of a heart. So as long as it's sitting there, he's looking right at you. I spoke to me like I did this before. You got you got these young guys. They go, hey, Q. Hey. And then, hey, my wife's sitting there. Hey, Q. And I'm just, because I don't want her to know. You forget Yahweh in you knows what you right. did. Right. So stop trying to fool yourself and fool him. You don't have to, and you don't, you want to come to a point where you don't have that type of evil sitting up in your heart and mind. You want to manifest a clear conscience before Yahweh concerning all things. Because that's the only thing, and if the Holy Spirit is resonating in you, people cannot tell me the Holy Spirit, after Peter never see the Holy Spirit, it led them to a hotel room with a prostitute. You cannot tell me that. I'm not going to believe that. Because the Holy Spirit don't lead you that way. Finish reading uh, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old. Mm-hmm. For I am Yahweh and there is none. Now I am Yahweh and there is none. Of, and then remember, eternal life is for you to know the only true Elohim. Read. I am Yahweh and there is none like me. I, I am Yahweh and there is none like me. Listen, I'm going to say this in TV. Man. Jesus is not like Yahshua. Those are two different people. Jehovah is not Yahweh. Those are two different people. Allah is not Yahweh. Those are two different people. Those are doctrines of demons. Now, I know it sounds harsh, but the commandment was, Patrick, when we read it, uh, when we read it the commandment was to love one another. And if I know the truth, if I love you, I'll tell you the truth. And that's what I'm saying here. Our slogan is to speak the truth. Why? Because we love a brother. Anybody who's going to lie to you because that will give you a hard way to go. Now, in order to know the truth, you have to be living. You got to be woke. Because you're prone to, you can't tell somebody the truth if you don't know it. And we're going to read that. Get 1 John 3 and 4. Uh, Rose, get 2 John 1 and 5. 1 John 3 and 4. This is 1 John 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And you know it's all. Sorry. I'm going to read up 4, 3, 4. No. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. Now, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And the law in this age and in this dispensation that you are saved by faith through great grace, not of anything else. It's the gift of Yahweh. Read. Uh, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sin. Exactly. Or he was manifested to get rid of what Adam had done. That's why he was manifested. Three. And in him is no sin. And ain't no sin in him. So if he and you, then you can't sin. Everybody is not a sinner. Once you come into the knowledge that the Holy Spirit is in you, you are no longer a sinner. Now, if the Holy Spirit ain't in you, then you're prone to sin. You're prone to want to do something physical for your salvation. Whether you got good habits or whether you got bad ones. Whether you smoke cigarettes or whether you run around with women. And that's what Lisa was saying. You can't point at the other person. Neither one of y'all ain't got the Holy Spirit to point at the other person and say, look at him. Because I'm living morally and he's over there chasing women, smoking cigarettes, drinking. Fool for y'all when y'all wait till the late. So you ain't no better than him. Because neither one of y'all have the requirement that you need in order to have eternal life. Read. You was whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Now whoever's in him don't sin because ain't no sin in him. Read. Whosoever sinneth, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Neither known him. Exactly. Remember, eternal life is to know. Read. Little children, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you, because that's who this mystery, these mysteries are working through. Me. Read. He that doeth righteousness is right. Now we only know there's only one person that can do righteousness. That's him. Now if he's in you, that's what makes you righteous. You ain't righteous on your own. Read. Even as he is righteous, mm -hmm. he that committed sin is of the devil. Uh oh. So for people, I see ministers stand up on TV and say, I'm a sinner. Read that again. Whosoever committed sin is of the devil. That's or in this age. See, we were redeemed from sin. But if you sin in this age, he that sins is of the devil. Read. For the devil sinned from the beginning. He sinned from the beginning. Read. For, for this purpose. The son of Yahweh is manifest. And let me say this. In heaven, there wasn't no other women to run around with. It wasn't no liquor. It wasn't no Philly Blunts. It wasn't none of that. They transgressed the commandment of Yahweh by worshiping Yahshua. And that commandment stands now that they may know the only true Elohim. Not for you to know Satan. You should be tired of messing with him. Because he hates you. Now Yahweh love you. That's why he did this. Because he loved you. Mm -hmm. Satan ain't going to do this for you. Like Mike said, you got somebody, I, I, I won't, I'm going to kill him because I don't want you to be with him. That ain't love. That's not love. Listen. Oh, well, you, you, keep, keep reading, Patrick. Okay. Who's he that committed sin is of the devil. Mm -hmm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose, mm -hmm. the, son of El the son of Elohim was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And whosoever is born of Yahweh does not commit sin, for his, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of Yahweh. Continue. Yep, read. And in, and in this the children of Yahweh are manifested, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of Yahweh. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Now read. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, for for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that ye should love one another. Not that's the, that's the message they didn't heard from the beginning. Not Remember, as Cain as didn't love Abel, he killed him. Mm -hmm. Read. Who, who, was, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's was righteous. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We just read that. Read. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. 
We know that we are passed from death unto life because we love the brother. Because we love the brother. Now, in that verse, the word love has four different definitions in Greek. And those four different definitions, that those four different words were ambiguously translated into one word. That word was love. Now, the love that John is talking about there, walking in the commandments of a king in the kingdom, and he, that's what he said, I'm going to walk in you. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? Now, phileo, to be fond of or have affection for. That's one definition. Agape, walk in the commandments of a king in the kingdom. Eros is a sexual love. Mankind's love is eros. Sturgos is a mutual love. You can love a person that walk down the street. You know people ain't got that. Because they're killing people left and right. But everybody like this one. But now Yahweh's love is keeping them commitment or him walking in you. And his commandments are not grievous. All he requires for you to do is have faith. And not in this. Faith in him. You know people ain't got this either. Because don't nobody want to be affectionate. Everybody walking around with attitude. And you know why? Because the Holy Spirit is not in it. Now the only way you can have this love is to have the Holy Spirit. Right? You can't keep a commandment if you ain't got his spirit because you're prone to sin. you did. So you gotta have the Holy Spirit in order to keep this. Anybody can do this, and everybody do. Everybody likes this look. And it's, it's sad. It really is. Because people confuse love with this. Get 2 John 1 and 5, bros. Read. Now, the lady he's talking about is, is the assembly or Yahshua's bride. That's the lady he's talking about. Collect. Read. Now, see, again, he's going to say from the beginning. Read. That we love one another. Read. And then he's going to tell you what love is. Read. And this is love. And this is love. Read. That we walk after his commandments. There we go. That's the thing that what I just. Right here, that we walk after his commandment. Read. This is a commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. Remember, they asked him, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart, mind, soul, and body. Now, if you can do that, then you'll be able to love one another. But the problem is people don't love him. Mm -hmm. Because if they did, they wouldn't say it don't matter what you call him. Mm -hmm. When he told them in Exodus 20, 12, don't take my name in vain. If they did, they wouldn't call him a liar to his face saying he instituted when he fulfilled. And then turn around and say, you smoking a cigarette is a sin. Or you drinking is a sin. When he never said that. As a matter of fact, with the law of the Nazarite, it was okay for them to drink, except while they were doing the law of the Nazarite, the, the Nazarite thing, the Nazarite vow. And then after they completed it, what you see right here, see why he, you see this is Joshua, he's born here. He had just completed the Nazarene vow. And then, first thing he did was turn water to wine. Like I said, believe me, he did drink. Now, the wine represents old and new covenant. Now, you can also be drunk spiritually, and that's a sin. That lady that was in Revelation, that Lisa had read, sitting on that, right here. See that cup she got? Say, made the people drunk, drove the kings of the earth mad with the, rap, the wine of her fornication. So see, it goes back and forth. But drinking, literally, is not a sin. Smoking is not a sin. Like Lisa said, that ain't the stuff that's going to get you to lake of fire. What's going to get you to lake of fire is you didn't know the only true Elohim whom Yahshua from my side said. Continue to read, Rose. Seventh verse. Mm -hmm. For many deceivers are entered into the world. And that's what you're witnessing. Those are those people saying smoking is a sin. Drinking is a sin. Many deceivers have entered into the world. Now, if you want to go one step further, it's the satanic spirits incarnated in physical bodies. Because like Lisa said, they can only see the natural. Read. For who confess 
not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. This is a deceiver Read. and an anti-Messiah. And an anti-Messiah. There's a many anti-Messiah out here. Mm -hmm. it, ain't, it ain't just speaking of one in particular. That's a whole bunch of them. You can walk down the street and see them. Read. Look to yourselves mm -hmm. that we lose not those things. Now the people that he's writing to, he's telling them, look to themselves because the Holy Spirit is in them. And like Lisa said, they, they have no need for no man to teach them. Why? Because the teacher's in them now. Read. Which we have worked. And that's what controls you. This is what controls you. This is what stops you from being in mystery Babylon and subscribing to the ways of the world or to Babylon. This, the spirit in you. Read. But that we receive a full reward. And you want your reward. Read. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of in, the Messiah. In the doctrine of the Messiah. Not doctrines of devils. Not doctrines that people have made up. Whosoever transgresseth and abide not in the doctrine of the Messiah, read. Hath not Elohim. They don't have Elohim. Why? Because Elohim is the Messiah, read. He that abideth in the doctrine of the Messiah, he hath both the Father and the Son. You know why he got the Father and the Son? Because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Mm -hmm. Read. If there come any unto you. Now this, this is important. If there come anybody unto you, Read. And bring not this doctrine. And bring not this doctrine. Read. Receive him not into your house. Well, in other words, don't say, hey, I see what you're saying. That makes sense. No, I don't. The only doctrine, the only, and people, they, they say, I heard Dr. Kelly say one of his lectures. He said, people say, well, I'm entitled to my own opinion. And Dr. Kelly said, you're going to find out later on. <laughs> If you can't find out now, you're going to find out later on. So you want to find out now because when the later on comes, and let me say this, get Leviticus 5.17 because some people, I've been hit with this too, I didn't know. So he ain't going to judge me because I didn't know that a sin and a habit wasn't the same thing. I didn't know. But we're going to find out what he said about not knowing. Now remember, eternal life is for you to know. Leviticus 5.17. Leviticus 5.17. Period. And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of Yahweh. Now you hear this? If a soul sins and commits any of these things that were forbidden to be done by Yahweh. Read. Though he, though he wished it was not. Though he knew it not. In other words, what that's saying. Read. Yet is he guilty. He's still guilty. You still have to make your account for that lamb, whether you know or not. And knowing is a lot better than not knowing. Sometimes people say, I'd rather not know. It was a song that Mario Wallace, uh, I don't want to know. I want to know. I want to know because what you don't know, people say, what I don't know won't kill me. That's a lie. <laughs> Eternal life is for you to know. Now, for the Jews that may be watching this broadcast, this right now, it was another song, Earth, Wind, and Fire. After the love is gone, what used to be right is wrong. It was right at that time for them to do it then, which they did not. Now it's wrong, and now they're trying. This is this guy at work. Dragon, you know what I call him Dragon? Because he drug on those carnal ordinances into this age of faith. And then Yahshua told it after he fulfilled it by dying on his cross, he said it is accomplished or it is done. He, he didn't tell them. He didn't say, you know what? Don't do it no more. Even though I told y'all to do it for 1,500 years, don't do it no more. Okay? Don't do it no more. He didn't do it like that. He did it by turning it dark from over the face of the earth from the sixth to the ninth hour. Or in other words, blotting out that hand and writing the ordinances, which was once against us or contrary to it. See, as long as you call them out, this was against you. A carnal mind cannot be subject to the law of Yahweh. And I'm not talking about smoking and drinking. Yahweh don't care nothing about that. And you shouldn't do anything in excess. Right. Nobody should have to tell. We don't teach down here that you should not drink. And for, and for us to sit down here and tell you that you, it's a sin to take a drink of anything, we would be out of order. Because it's not true. But at the same time, we don't sit down here and tell you hang up under a bottle and get all twisted up and go outside and start acting a fool. We don't teach that either. We teach follow the Holy Spirit within. 
That's what we teach. We teach the one thing that I, I appreciate my mother for. When I was younger, I used to have problems. She said, I say, uh, well, I want to know about this, or I want to do this. She said, what do y'all say? I say, what, 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 what you mean? I want to know now. This is what Yahshua said. But what that did was it forced me to rely on him. So one day, I, uh, this is a personal testimony. One day I seen this jug I, mean, I thought it was cool. It was sitting on the counter. My grandfather was like, going along. So, and this jug sitting on the counter. And I was like, can I drink that? <laughs> you know, I'm like, can I drink it? He was like, yeah, I drink it. And he didn't know. And you know, because they eat the drug all so he didn't know. <laughs> but this, the voice told me, the voice told me, do not drink that. And I'm I'm going up to that, I'm going up to the jar, and I'm like, I'm going to pour it in the glass. And the voice said again, do not drink that. Then I come to put it up to my lips and it smelled it and it was gas. So I would have been, I wouldn't be standing here if I'd have drunk it. But I already did. Oh. <laughs> really? You know, and, and I'll say this too. I mean, I'll say this. It wasn't until I came back into this class as an adult that I heard my Heavenly Father's voice clearly for the first time. And our prayer is for you that are sitting here and that are out there in TV line. And I know somebody like, you talking to me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> that you never have to hear the words. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew. But that you hear the words, come ye blessed of my Father and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Here it is. They totally illustrated on this chart. Here it is. But the reality is in you. And with that, I'd like to say, hallelujah. hallelujah.